Between first and second year university, something clicked in my learning that made me realize this is the right way to study. And that study technique is called active recall. You see, most research thus far has been focused on getting the information into your brain. But it was only recently that focus has shifted to retrieval of learned information. Active recall essentially means that you're remembering and repeating as much as possible the information you learned without looking at your notes. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're learning about the heart anatomy. You read in your lecture slide or textbook that blood flows from the pulmonary veins to the left atrium, to the left ventricle, and out through the aorta. What most of us do is read that information, move on to the next slide. By the time you write your test, you forget what you read. But in active recall, we read the information and we take a moment away from our notes to think and imagine if we can remember how the blood flows. So blood comes from the pulmonary veins to the left. Ah, I gotta look that up. Anyways, it goes to the left ventricle and then out through the A, A something. I have to look this up too. Then you go back, look at your notes and see what you got wrong and you complete your active recall. Okay, it's pulmonary veins to the left atrium, to the left ventricle, to the aorta. Let's move on. An active recall can be used in non-academic settings. A study by Morris et al. in 2005 tested people's ability to remember names at a party. While those who looked at the person and the name only remembered 5 at the end of the test, those who did active recall remember 11. So you're probably thinking, okay fine, I get it. How useful is this anyways? Well, let me explain. Here's Professor Jeffrey Karpik. In his study, he showed that active recall outperformed other methods of studying. He gave 80 undergraduate students a science text to read and compared the test results a week after for those who read the text once, four times, those who drew a concept map, and those who actively recalled, trying to remember as much information as possible without looking. And listen to what he had to say. Just by actively trying to recall. Um, and so here are the data. This is a week after they have learned. We bring them back and we, we give them these questions. And these are the, the verbatim questions, the little short answer questions. If they just read it once, they're, they're not so good. They're 30%, not, not so good in terms of the percentage correct. Um, if they spend a little more time, they do a little bit better. Um, and so we can ask what happens when they spent that time making this, this diagram of all the concepts. It actually didn't gain them very much at all. But the important result was that spending that same time practicing actively recalling produced the kinds of effects that we expect to see. And here's a closer look at the graphs that Dr. Karpik illustrated. It's not just in the verbatim short answer questions that students perform better. They also performed well on inference application of knowledge type questions. In addition, Professor John Dolowski in his well-conducted study to determine the best method of learning showed that rereading and highlighting rank as low utility techniques and practice testing a form of free recall rank high utility technique. So do students use this technique? Well, we don't. Survey by Karpik, Butler, and Rodiger in 2009 showed that rereading was the dominant technique used by students. And active recall? Well, you can't even see that well on this chart. And this method of active recall is discussed more and more in the literature. A review paper published in Yale Journal of Biology and Medicine by Mark Augustin highlighted that medical students ought to use active recall to retain the vast amount of information they learn in schools. And education research is moving in a direction where more active recall is being promoted to be utilized in our education systems. So why does this technique work? Let's take a look. Per Professor Karpik, rereading and elaborating simply multiply or increase the number of encoded features. Let's call them cues. You can use these cues to answer a question on a test. But active recall not only organizes the structure of those cues, but it also improves the diagnostic value of those cues, meaning it increases the cues connections or specificity to the information you're going after. Now, after using this technique in undergrad and in medicine, I found the following steps to work the best for me. First, you have to understand the material before you start active recall. So read, attend lectures, and think about it until it clicks. And that's when you begin active recall. 
I found the best time to do this is on the same day or the day after the lecture because professors tend to give out only point form slides. So if I actively recall closer to the time of the lecture, I can integrate more information from those lectures. Step one is explaining the concept to myself in my head. Questions I ask myself are why and how, and this is sometimes provided in lectures or textbooks. After doing that, I check back at the slides or notes to see what I got wrong and I reconsolidate the information. Step three, I verbalize what I learned. So if you have a diagnosis of Cushing's disease and you give high dose dexamethasone, I noticed that I could explain the information in my head, but when I had to verbalize, I started forgetting. And that's when I recognized the gaps in my knowledge. Step four is doing this slide by slide, then moving on to concept by concept. For example, doing slide one to five and then six to 10. Step five, this is when I write my concise notes if I have to, and you'll write better notes because you'll know what information to write to trigger your memory. Then I would repeat the act of recall using spaced repetition, using something like retrospective revision timetable, which I will cover in my next video. But the point is this, you wanna come back for active recall at a lengthening time interval. So for a midterm, I would review the entire material using active recall two to three times before I write the test. And the final point is that you don't have to get the active recall right the first time. So a study by Cornell et al. showed that students who got their recall wrong still demonstrated feedback enhanced learning. And here's what you shouldn't do with active recall. The biggest downside of this technique is that it takes a lot of brain power. So the difficulty will discourage you and you may easily skip on an information without fully knowing it. You're essentially just rereading at that point. I found that this mistake is especially common with flashcards or Anki or Quizlet. I know it's difficult, but you can make it active. Walk around or pace explaining a concept to yourself. You don't have to sit at a desk the whole time. Two, looking at answers prior to answering. This is not recall at all, that's rereading. And finally, number three is not thinking deeply about why you got the recall wrong. You have to go back and think about why you couldn't recall that information. And finally, I want to point out that rote memorization of random facts like pharmacological drug names can be better learned with something called spaced repetition technique, which I will cover in my next video. All right, I hope these were useful and I hope that you get the grades that you want. If you like the video, click the like button and subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you guys soon.